This is Cashflow Ninja, episode 45 with Joe Fairless. Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Now, here is your host, MC Laubscher. Hello everyone, MC Lobster here and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a fantastic show for you today. We are going to cover a couple of topics which I think you'll find extremely valuable. We're going to look at how to build a Madison Avenue brand on a shoestring budget and talk about how to raise capital for your business and investments. Now I've talked on past shows how important the skill of selling and the ability to sell is if you want to go in business for yourself an essential skill to go to the next level and expand your business and investments is to learn how to raise capital. If you don't have the money, but you have a project or deal or investment and a skill set, or can put a team together that have the skill set and the experience to execute, you can go and raise money from investors and contacts in your network. We are also going to briefly look at real estate syndication deals. I'm really excited and honored to have as my guest today, Joe Fairless. Joe is someone that I've studied personally and learned a lot from. He has really built a very unique online brand, and I'm a very big fan of his podcast. Joe is the host of the world's longest-running daily real estate podcast, Best Real Estate Investing Advice Ever. His career began in New York City as the youngest vice president of an advertising agency to creating a real estate company that now controls over $54 million worth of real estate. In his real estate career, Joe had an amazing success making the jump from single family to multifamily real estate investing, and he also consults and educates investors on real estate investing. Joe's new book, Best Real Estate Investing Advice Ever, Volume 1, has been personally endorsed by Barbara Cochran from the Shark Tank, and all of the profits from his book sales are being donated to the Junior Achievement of Cincinnati. Before we're joined by Joe, just a reminder that you can download any audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can grab your free trial and audiobook download at cashflowninja.com forward slash free book download. You can also support the show by doing your Amazon shopping through our homepage, cashflowninja.com forward slash Amazon. It does not cost you anything and you support the show. All of our show notes and past shows are available at CashflowNinja.com, and you can join our community and mailing list by texting the word CashflowNinja, one word, all capitalized, to 44222. That's two fours and three twos. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to the Cashflow Ninja podcast with your host, MC Lobsher. You must be prepared to ignite. Joe, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot, MC. Thanks for having me and looking forward to our conversation. Can you please share a little bit about your background and your journey as an entrepreneur and a real estate investor? Uh, sure. I am from Texas. I went to Texas Tech University, graduated in 2005 with an advertising major, moved up to New York City, uh, making less than minimum wage at a um, advertising agency on Madison Avenue. So it was really prestigious, but just wasn't making any money and they 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 knew they didn't have to pay me because it was a, a good gig and I got that on my resume then jumped to another agency was there for seven years uh, and I eventually the third agency and ended, ended up being the youngest vice president of of the agency and at that point I realized that I just wasn't digging it anymore uh, I had been investing in single family homes along the way uh, when I first moved to New York City, I didn't have any money uh, to invest, but uh, whenever I started getting promoted, then I started um, getting uh, some money that I could save, and what I did, I actually kept my expenses the same, even though I kept getting promoted. My friends would make fun of me, saying I was living like a college kid, and I graduated college eight years ago, 
And they were right. I was living like a college kid, but I was also buying these single family homes and they weren't. And I saw that as a long term, a long term play for me and me and my business. So uh, as I started acquiring those single family homes, I gravitated more and more towards real estate, eventually started teaching some classes on it in New York City because my friends are like, how are you buying these uh, these houses? But you also are a, a VP at an ad agency. How are you doing that? So I started teaching them how I was doing it, uh, which wasn't rocket science, by the way. It was just I save up money and I go buy something. But I talked to them about how to identify the cash flow and expenses and all that and some creative ways to finance single family homes. But once I decided I wasn't doing advertising, I uh, started looking at another way to invest, which I gravitated towards multifamily investing, and that's what I do now. I'm um, a multifamily in, uh, investor. I control over $54 million in real estate and uh, have apartment communities in Texas and Ohio. Great, and that's a very powerful lesson, too. We've, sp- we've spoken about Parkinson's Law on the show where – your expenses meet or exceed that increase in income that you that you receive. So that that's great advice. Now, was there an experience or an aha moment that you had that inspired you to take the plunge and move away from your job on Madison Avenue? I, I remember looking at my my um, spreadsheet with all of these single family home projections that I have to buy in order to reach a substantial financial goal. And I realized that it, I, I couldn't get to where I wanted to go as fast as I wanted to get there if I kept buying these one-off single-family homes because I was making 250 bucks a month from those homes. And then a tenant would move out, and then that would be $5,000 to fix up the carpet and the paint and you know, plumbing or whatever. And then I wouldn't make any money on that home for a year, year and a half. So I realized that I needed to do something else. Uh, and at that point, I started looking into other things. And once I got interested in multifamily investing, my interest started waning in the uh, advertising world. And eventually, um, I ended up being at a coffee shop with my buddy, Giancarlo. And we were sitting there. It was on a Tuesday afternoon when I was supposed to be at work, but Hurricane Sandy had hit. Uh, New York City, I believe it was Hurricane Sandy, it hit New York City, and my office building was shut down. So it was a Tuesday afternoon. I was at a cafe with my buddy who had just recently started his own company, and I realized at that time, I was like, I am meant to be doing something else besides working in an office at an ad agency because I just hate it. Uh, So uh, it was a combination of those two events that led me to uh, what I do now. Yeah, because New York City is very fast moving and fast by. So when you had a moment just to think for yourself and reflect on your situation in your life, you looked back at it and said, I needed to make a change. Yep, exactly. Now, with your Madison Avenue background, obviously, what lessons did you learn on how to build a strong, authentic brand for your business? And can you also share how and if you can do this on a small budget for the solopreneurs out there listening? The most important thing is that you target the smallest audience possible that would uh, enjoy your message and that you can naturally integrate with and that you'd want to um, integrate with because so often we try to reach the masses, but by trying to reach the masses, we are drowned out by all the noise and all the clutter that's that's in our in our world. So, uh, as someone who you know, I've worked with brands from Mike, we're the the social media agency of record for Microsoft. For um, I worked with the the VP of T-Mobile. I mean, t- tons of tons of really savvy marketers. I also worked for uh, companies. Through my advertising agency role, we worked with companies that weren't successful. Uh, and I realized what it took and what it didn't take for brands to be successful. So that's one. Uh, find the smallest audience and then build up from there or just really engage that audience with stuff that you like. Um, the, the other is that the number one influencer of purchase intent is word of mouth. We can do all we want to um, do 
Facebook ads and spend what all this money, but at the end of the day, if you want to grow your company, your real estate company, any company, the strongest and the sturdiest way possible, then you've got to incorporate word of mouth. And you get good word of mouth by providing a good product uh, that's superior to others and by making sure that uh, the value that you give to the recipient, to your customer, exceeds their expectations. Um, but you also get good mouth by methodically structuring in ways that people can share your your product and your experience and enabling them, empowering them to share that. One example is I just wrote a book, The Best Real Estate Investing Advice Ever, Volume 1, Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank personally endorsed the book, uh, and uh, as well as many others, and it's one of the top-selling books in real estate on it and on Amazon. And what I did is I mailed out to all of my investors two copies of the book: one autographed copy with a little personal note to them that they could keep, but then another that uh, I mentioned in the note that it was for them to give to a friend. That's the type of stuff, just small stuff like that, that can go a long way because how I make the majority of my money is by buying large apartment communities with investors and sharing in the profit. So if my current investors are sharing it with their friends, this book with their friends, then it's more likely that they'll be um, you know, more prone to invest with me in the future. That's great advice. Now let's jump into the real estate. You started investing in single family houses and then you went to large apartment communities. Can you share the process that enabled you to take that big step up so quickly? Yeah, it was it was a a very um, it wasn't as linear of a process as I as I'd like, but um, there are, there are some some things that I learned along the way. One is you can't treat apartment communities like single family homes because. Uh, uh, my single family homes, I spend maybe two minutes a month on them just looking at the statements. Uh, I tried to do that the very first month of my very first purchase of the apartment community. did not work out at all. At all. <laughs> uh, they, it, You need to pay close attention to the property management company. You pay close attention to the marketing, the, the uh, expenses, the income that's collected. I mean... There is you. You have to stay highly involved with the apartment communities, and uh, so many people say uh, that. Oh, no, I don't know about so many people, but I've heard people say that I want to buy apartments, and that way um, it it will be more hands off because I'll have a management company in place and economy of scale. It is not more hands off; it's more hands on to have an apartment building, and that's one thing that I learned. Another thing I learned is that credibility in the single-family space doesn't mean squat in the multifamily space. I thought it did. I thought that because I had four homes, and looking back on it, it's really silly, but at the time I thought because I had four single-family homes that the brokers, the commercial real estate brokers, the apartment owners would take me seriously because I, was, uh, I had that experience, when in fact it hurts you. Uh, it hurts you because they think that you're only a single-family home investor. You're not an apartment building investor. So between those those two things, um, I I navigated navigated those issues. Um, and how you solve for the credibility thing, by the way, just to put a solution, not just put out put there put out a problem. Um, to give you a solution, how you solve for that credibility thing is you align yourself with those who have the credibility and uh, from a perception standpoint, and then uh, when you execute, you make sure that those on the ground are aligned with your interests. There are multiple ways to do that. What I, what I mean specifically is your property management company. Um, you can either uh, pay them a fee, which is typical, 4% of the collected uh, income, 4 or 5%, maybe 3%, depends on the size of the property, depends on the market, and depends on the, the business plan of the property. Uh, but you could also have them invest alongside with you into the deal. I've done that on deals right. where the, 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 the property management company and puts their own money in the deal. And then you can go back to your investors, 
the brokers and you can say, hey, I don't have this experience, but guess what? The property management company is investing their own money into the deal and they're going to be managing it with us. And there's pros and cons for that too. And we, don't, we, we, can, we can get into that if you want. But a, another benefit or an additional benefit to having your property management company with you in, in the investment is you can ask them to bring in their own investors into the deal. So that would be less money out of pocket that you'd have to bring and they would bring their own investors. And that further adds a, a layer of accountability and alignment with them because not only are they putting in their own money, but they're putting in their own money plus investor money. So there's tons of ways you can get around the credibility thing, um, but that was an eye-opener whenever I first got started. Let's talk about real estate syndication too. Can you just give a brief overview of exactly what it is and how a syndicated deal flows? Yeah, sure. Syndication is something that we've all all participated in. Uh, if you've flown on a plane, because what we do when we fly on a plane is we don't buy the plane, we buy a ticket on the plane so that we can and we can all get from one destination to another, uh, and we don't have to buy the whole thing. That's that's what syndication is. So with when you you look at from apartment standpoint, well, it's um, we buy something. Uh, but we all pay a, pro a smaller price for this larger thing. So instead of a plane, it's an apartment building. Uh, and instead of a ticket to ride on the airplane to take us from point A to point B, we buy a share in the LLC that owns the apartment building, and that will take us from one financial place to another financial place. That's, that's all syndication is. That's all multifamily syndication is. Um, and as far as the process goes... Um, I mean, we could spend about a seven day series, eight hours a day on the process, but <laughs> right. I, I, I'll give you a high level, very high level overview of the process. Um, ultimately it's about matching up money with deals. I mean, that, that's, that's what it is. You, you match up the money with a deal and then you manage it properly and then you make money if everything goes according to plan. Uh, from a, a little bit more granular level, you how how you go about multifamily syndication is first you identify your goal, uh, then you make sure you know what your terminology the terminology is for the business, then you make sure you know how to underwrite it and run the numbers, then you identify the market that you want to uh, invest in or markets. I recommend one to two markets. Uh, at that point, you. Uh, are ready to start building your brand. Uh, so you uh, create a website, you um, create business cards, you have a company name, you have a logo. And then you start uh, speaking to investors about what you're doing, learning about their goals, learning about what success looks like for an investment for them, then asking them, if I find something that meets that criteria, would you like me to share it with you? Of course, they all say yes when you phrase it that way. Then you uh, start, start having those investor conversations. When you've reached the point where you have enough verbal interest uh, to buy the property size that you're looking to buy, at that point, you uh, can look at properties. And then you go find the property based on what your criteria uh, are. And uh, once you find the property, you close on it, and then you manage it, and then you um, rinse and repeat. Now, let's go back a little bit again to raising capital because that's an incredible skill for an investor and entrepreneur to have. And you've mentioned two ways how you were able to raise capital. Can you talk about other ways and some of the uh, techniques that you used to raise over $1 million for your first real estate deal? Sure. Uh, the, the thing I recommend for your listeners who are wanting to raise money is to um, put, and I have a spreadsheet. I'll, I'll give your listeners a spreadsheet if you it, that I'm about to describe. Just email me info at joefairless.com and say, you know, cash flow ninja spreadsheets for investors, something oh, like that. It, thank inf you. Yeah, it, info at joefairless.com, info at joefairless.com. All right, so the way to approach it is uh, in this spreadsheet there's going to be columns. And each column, you'll have a first name, 
last name, low range, high range, network, and miscellaneous. I might have missed a couple columns, but those are the most important things. So, so what you want to do is the most important column that I just said is network. Because here, here's, here's, a, here's a little trick. You want to identify 50 people that you know. If you don't know 50 people, baloney. You do know 50 <laughs> people. Stop that stupid self-talk. You yeah, know 50 exactly. people. Right? Yep. Uh, look in your phone and put down 50 people. Right. And in, in this spreadsheet, uh, put in the network how you know them. And the goal is to get one person from each of those networks to say, yeah, you know what, MC, I'm interested in what, what you're talking about. And when that person says I'm interested, go to other people in that network and say, well, so-and-so and I were talking and – he was interested, and we thought you'd be interested in, in hearing about this too because it lowers the barrier for entry when someone who I know is an interested in an opportunity because if someone I don't know if, – if I don't know anyone in the deal or interested, then I'm less inclined. But if I know someone who's already interested, then I'm more inclined. goes back to what I said earlier. The greatest influencer of purchase intent is word-of-mouth referrals. Right. Um, so so uh, list out all the networks that you're a part of. And so I'm going to be very specific. You asked about my first deal, how I raised over a million bucks. I'll tell you. Um, I have different networks that I'm a part of. I filled out this spreadsheet. I created it. There wasn't anything to fill out. I created it from scratch. And I put the different networks that I'm a part of. Uh, one of them is Texas Tech Alumni Advisory Board. I'm on the Alumni Advisory Board at Texas Tech University. Uh, I, I got a couple investors from that. Another is my advertising days. I got three investors from people who worked with me in advertising. I had um, three people who had lived with me in the past, one a two in college and one after college. All three of those former roommates invested with me. Um, someone on my flag football team invested with me. I only knew him through uh, a flag, my flag football team. Uh, I had I volunteer for Junior Achievement, and I'm the I'm I'm on the board for Junior Achievement here in Cincinnati. Uh, but I was living in New York City at the time, and um, I I listed that network. So I had people from each of these networks invest with me, and that's how you're able to get the momentum going uh, much faster than if you were to take a, a approach that wasn't strategic. So every investor and entrepreneur faces challenges and adversity and, you know, there's many bumps on the road on your journey. It's not all rainbows and unicorns. What's the biggest lesson you've learned and uh, how did you bounce back from some of the failures that you've had? Oh, I'm still learning. I'm, 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 I'm still trying to, to process uh, how to deal with crap that comes up. And it, it comes up daily. Yep. <laughs> uh, because as an entrepreneur, I mean, man, we're, we're starting something from scratch. Most of us are are starting something from scratch. You know, I started my podcast two and I think like two years ago um, or so, two thousand September two thousand fourteen. However long ago that was, about two years, and it's a daily. It's the world's longest running daily real estate podcast. I I didn't know if I was going to do it. Uh, until 30 days into it, I was like, you know what? I don't know if this is good use of my time or not, so I'm going to just keep on rocking it for the rest of the year, so like two more months, and then I'm going to see if it's a good use of uh, my time. So I, it, it's just a matter of having personal development um, tips and surrounding yourself with the right people. And I'll be more specific because I hate that generic answer. Tony Robbins has been a big influence in my life. I my first six months as an entrepreneur, I watched every single YouTube video out there on Tony Robbins. I went to a seminar a year and a half or two years later. He was telling stories I'd already heard of. I had heard 70, 75 percent of every single story that he told at the seminar. And that's OK. Right. But that, that just shows you how much I was studying him. And studying how he approaches things. And I have a couple quotes I live by. The secret to living is giving. Uh, and life is happening for us, not to us. 
Uh, and by living those quotes and internalizing them, that that's what allows me to you know to to get through the stuff I I get through. But it, it's I don't have a life coach. I have a, a Tony Robbins life coach who helps me. Um, but ultimately, it's it's the any doesn't matter what happens to me. It's the meaning I give it and what the heck I do about it. Because I guarantee you, I guarantee you that if the, the things that would have happened to me, um, like uh, not doing the proper due diligence on my first deal, uh, like not capitalizing it properly, so I've had to put my own money in it. It turns out it turned out well, but it was a rocky road. If those things would happen to someone else, then they would have failed. Or if those things would happen to someone else, they would have succeeded much greater than me. Right. You know, it, it just depends on how we as individuals react to what happens to us and what we do and how resourceful we are. Um, and a circumstance can happen to – the same circumstance can happen to two different people, and you'll have drastically different results because it's how they operate. It's how they approach things. So what I've realized through all the challenges that I've come across as an entrepreneur and as a real estate – full-time real estate investor – is it just matters what meaning you attach to that situation and what the heck are you going to do about it that will solve it and then learn from it so you can mitigate it from happening again. I love Tony Robbins as well. I mean, he was talking about how there's a blueprint for success. So when people think, you know, where am I going to find a mentor or, you know, that, you just you just said it. You, go to YouTube. <laughs> find yep. someone that you admire or has done something that, uh, that you want to do already and then study everything about them. It's so key. Now, staying on the topic of just keep on studying and being a lifelong learner, um, one of the habits that I've observed just of successful people is that they're always studying new subjects and learning new skills. So, Joe, what are you currently studying and what new skill sets are you currently learning? Oh, I recently bought a bunch of books. Um, I'm reading Alexander Hamilton's biography right now. Uh, I think he, he was a fascinating guy. I mean, my gosh, it, in a period of like four years, his dad, and he was, I think, 12 or something at the time, just a young kid. His dad left him. Uh, he was sick, and he was sick with, with his mom, and in the same bed, his mom died next to him. Uh, he then was an orphan and got sent to s some other like distant family member, and then they died, and... Uh, no one was leaving him anything, and I mean, he he had like five or six events happen within a very short amount of time, and he not only overcame it, but he was one of the founding fathers of our country. Hearing stories like that inspire me so much, and I just love immersing myself with uh, those individuals and learning from those individuals. So that's one thing is I'm learning about Alexander Hamilton, uh, and I'm reading his biography. Another is I'm, you know, I, I, I read a bunch of real estate investing books. Let's see, Emerging Real Estate Markets by Dave Lindahl is right next to me. I haven't started that, but I've read his other book, Multifamily Millions. Uh, I am reading Dolph DeRuz's 101 or 100 Ways to Increase the Value of a Property. I, yeah, I, I just, I read a bunch. Um, so those are, those are the ways. Additionally, I've got a daily podcast. Right. I I, You're I interview a busy guy. <laughs> yeah, I I interview on average one person a day. So I'm learning someone's business model somewhere in the world, mostly United States, but somewhere in the world who is doing real estate at a high level. So I'm able to learn just from doing my podcast. And and that's been really beneficial. Yeah, no, I've definitely had the same experience. It's just fantastic. I just learn every day so much from my guests. It's it's great. Now, Joe, a core message in our show is to leave our families, communities, and the world in a better place than we found it by passing down a mindset and values and principles to future generations, not just money. And as you mentioned, and I love your motto too on, on your website, the secret to, to living is giving. Now, 
If you cannot pass on any money to future generations and you were only allowed to pass on three principles to them to build wealth, achieve happiness and success, what would they be? Uh, one would be you're dying, live accordingly. That's one because we get so caught up in s- small stuff and everything's small. Everything's small. Um, the small stuff, except for death. I don't think that's small because that's that's depending on your belief, uh, but um, I think it could be final. Um, so you're you're dead or you're dying. Live accordingly. I think that's one belief and principle I would I would pass down. Uh, I think the secret to living is giving. So just continue to give more, um, and things will come back around. I think karma is a a real thing, and. Uh, the law of reciprocity is a law for a reason. Uh, you give, you give, you give, you will receive, and you will receive tenfold than what you give, whether you're realizing it or not. And then I'll get tactical. I'll say, stay, stay cash heavy. Uh, I've interviewed a bunch of people who lost it all when the recession hit, and they were over leveraged. They didn't have enough cash in the bank account to keep things afloat when the bad times happen. So make sure you got enough cash in your account. That specific amount depends on your comfort level and probably what else you own so that you can make sure that you cover the the mortgages and the expenses if and when the downturn happens. Now that's very important. Cash flow is what keeps a business alive and just having some reserves to to fall back on is, is just key. What books would you recommend to my audience? Well, it depends. If they're if they're looking for apartment building investing, if if you're lo- I'll, I'll speak to you, audience. <laughs> if you're looking for apartment building investing, then I've got a resources guide that I'd be happy to give you. Um, again, email me info i n f o at joefairless dot com, and my assistant I won't be responding, but my assistant Samantha, she's wonderful. She'll respond and she'll get you the resources guide. And in this resources guide. It has uh, about six or seven books that I recommend on apartment investing. Um, and I'll mention some right uh, here in a second. Um, so if no one wants to get this resources guide, you can still get the info, some of the info. Um, but this guide also has like 30 different websites that I go to. Most of them are free. And you're able to get a bunch of good research um, for apartment investing and market criteria and market selection uh, and research. And then also it has a podcast that I recommend listening to, a YouTube channel, um, all sorts of stuff. So uh, info at joefairless.com if you want that resources guide with all these different free resources. Well, you have to pay for the books, um, but there's like Amazon link. Um, as As far as a couple books that I recommend off the top of my head, one is A Commercial Real Estate Investing by Dolph DeRuz. He, he's he, I've heard there's controversy around him I don't know I haven't looked it up uh, but I just know I like that book so commercial real estate investing by Dolph DeRuz and then another would be the complete guide to buying and selling apartment buildings by Steve Burgess those are two I will tell you that I uh, my book that just came out um, best real estate investing advice ever volume one which was endorsed by Barbara Corcoran that has apartment investing advice as well as a bunch of other advice from for land flipping, for fixing and flipping, for wholesaling, for uh, getting loans, uh, how to become fin- how people have become financially free using case studies. Because what I did is I took the, the, the best of the first 100 episodes of my podcast and we made it into a story format and each, each interview is a chapter. So there's like 30 chapters. And uh, each interview has its own chapter, and, and it highlights how that successful investor got to where he or she got and ways that you can do the same thing. Great, and thank you for being so generous. I will put all the information to and links to all of the resources you just described and where they can reach you now. Joe, what's the primary platform that listeners can go to to learn more about you, your company, your fantastic podcast? I highly recommend that. And then some of your courses and education and just keep informed of all the projects that you're involved with. Uh, you can go to joefairless.com and there is a, there's a, 
a guide that you can get. You put in your email address and you get this guide on the 24 ways to get off-market deals, uh, apartment deals specifically. Uh, so you can go to joefairless.com and get those, get those uh, 24 ways. Fantastic. Joe, thank you so much for coming on the show and just providing so much value and just sharing your knowledge and your journey. Really appreciate it. And I, I've just really enjoyed following you as well. I've got to say I learned so much from you, just following you and listening to your podcast and just your overall business. So that's truly been inspiring to me personally. So thank you very much. I'm grateful that I was on the show and everyone it's, it's been nice having a conversation with you and looking forward to staying in touch. Thank you for joining me and my guest, Joe Fairless. Remember to grab your free audiobook download from Audible. You can download any book for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can grab your free trial and audiobook download at cashflowninja.com forward slash free book download. And please support our show by doing your shopping on Amazon through our homepage at cashflowninja.com forward slash Amazon. You can join our community and mailing list by texting the word Cashflow Ninja, one word, all capitalized, to 44222 that's two fours and three twos as always guys if there's any way that i can provide more value to you and serve you better please go to our contact page and send me an email until next time live a life of passion and purpose on your terms you have been listening to the cash flow ninja with your host mc laubscher the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Today's show notes and resources are available on our website, CashflowNinja.com. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objective, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness. 